Uncle Ricky, mm -hmm. would you read us a bedtime story, please, huh, please? You all tucked in? Yeah. Here we go. It's now been almost 25 years since Slick Rick released his last album, but his name still rings like royalty. Slick Rick the Ruler is a legend. From the voice, to the bling, to the eye patch, he is to hip hop storytelling what Stephen King is to horror, and William Shakespeare is for the theater. He's one of the most sampled voices in the history of music. His influence has infiltrated the farthest corners of modern American culture, making him one of the most important figures in the history of hip hop. He is Slick Rick, the ruler. Born in London, England in 1965, Rick was blinded in his right eye as an infant due to some broken glass. While being partially blinded was a hindrance on his everyday life, his eye patch became one of the most iconic pieces of hip hop apparel and helped him create his unique image in the game. He and his family moved to the birthplace of hip hop, the Bronx, when he was just 11 years old, just a few years after hip hop was invented and while it was thriving and growing through the borough. He went to the LaGuardia High School for Music and Art, where he met Dana Dame, and the two formed the group The Kangol Crew, performing in parks, parties, and local clubs and rap contests. Rick competed in one contest that would go on to change his life forever, when he impressed one of the judges, who happened to be the original human beatbox, Dougie Fresh. Rick, who was then known by the name MC Ricky D, ended up joining Dougie Fresh's Get Fresh crew. With Doug's beatboxing expertise and Rick's rapping prowess, the two ended up creating a couple of the most iconic hip-hop songs in history. The show is an 80s classic, with Doug and Rick going back and forth, proving that they're among the best duos in hip-hop. But it was that song's B-side, La Di Dadi, which transcended the era and genre. It's the single most sampled hip-hop song of all time, and the fifth most sampled song over any genre. And this song is 100% vocals from Doug and Rick, so their performances have been reused and adapted thousands of times over the years. Some of the most iconic artists to sample this song are Biggie, Kanye, Beyonce, Miley Cyrus, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mariah Carey, Sublime, Tupac, A Tribe Called Quest, and literally over a thousand others. Here's some of my favorite uses of the sample. We like the party, we don't cause trouble, we don't bother nobody where. Lordy Dottie, we likes to party, we don't cause trouble, we don't bother nobody. Yeah, so la da di da di, we like to party. Ricky, 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 can't you see? Somehow your words just hypnotize me, and I just love your jazzy ways. So Ricky, Ricky, can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me, and I just love your flashy ways. To the tick tock, you don't stop. To the tick tick, and you don't quit. Hit it! The original La Di Dadi is one of the most incredible songs ever made in my opinion. Every single word is perfectly delivered. The way Rick is able to play with his vocal inflections and bounce off Doug's constantly evolving beat is immaculate, and it's a great example of Rick's phenomenal storytelling skills. He's able to tell this very simple story, essentially about him waking up and then going on to meet a girl, but he does it in a way that's so captivating to listen to, filled with comedic wit, beautiful melodies, and hard-hitting punchlines. In 1986, Rick left the Get Fresh crew to pursue a solo career and signed to Def Jam, which was the premier rap label of the time. His debut album, The Great Adventures of Slick Rick, was released in 1988 and is one of the best albums of the 1980s. The album has such a unique feel to it, being mostly produced by Rick himself and riddled with Rick putting on voices and playing different characters, it's truly a one-of-a-kind classic. A lot of people credit De La Soul with bringing concept records into hip-hop in 1989, but here Rick is creating cinematic scenes a whole year earlier. The album has so many timeless classic songs, like The Ruler's Back, Mona Lisa, Hey Young World, and more. But the best song here, and one of the best songs ever recorded, is Children's Story. The quintessential hip-hop story track, this is what most people think of when they hear Slick Rick, and for good reason. It's a cautionary tale about a kid who makes some bad decisions, and has some brushes with the law. But it's masquerading as a literal children's bedtime story, which adds so many layers to the track. In the song, Rick is reading a bedtime story to his nephews, and the story starts off with a simple once upon a time not long ago, but devolves into a twisted tale of crime, murder, and police brutality. Similar to La Di Dadi, this is a song where every word is perfectly placed, and every syllable is spoken with such precision. This year marks the 50th birthday for hip-hop, 
and this song is still one of the most important and best rap songs ever recorded. Now Rick still had a lot of music left to give us, but there was some family drama behind the scenes that put a halt to his career. At the turn of the decade, Rick had his cousin working for him as a bodyguard, but Rick had to fire him after he tried to extort Rick for more money. After he was fired, his cousin began threatening to kill Rick and his mother, and Rick ended up shooting his cousin. There were no life-threatening injuries, but Rick ended up spending five years in prison, two for attempted murder, and three for disputes for immigration services over his residency in the US. He was in prison until 1997, but he was able to make the most of his time up until then. In 1991, after being bailed out by Russell Simmons, he was able to release his second album, The Ruler's Back. Recorded in just three weeks while he was out on bond, this album has a pretty different feel to his debut. It seems less refined, with Rick adopting a faster approach to his rap style, so it loses a bit of his comedy and storytelling, which are his two greatest strengths in my opinion. Even though it's newer than his debut, it somehow sounds more dated than it. But with that being said, I do really appreciate how Rick took the chance and evolved the sound instead of being left as a one album wonder. Even though it may not reach classic heights, songs like I Shouldn't Have Done It, Top Cat, and Runaway still make this a really fun album. His third studio album, Behind Bars, was released when he was literally behind bars, and it was much more of a return to form for him. It features production from Vance Wright, Pete Rock, Large Professor, Easy Mo B, and Warren G, so this was a showcase of some of the best talent that the 90s had to offer. The album was mostly recorded in 1993, during a short work release period, but he certainly got the best of that time. The album felt like it lived within his zone. It was jazzy and a bit calmer than its predecessor, leaving room for Rick's rapping to be the main event. I really love this whole project, but the best track is Sitting in My Car. On this track he reunited with Dougie Fresh to remix Billy Stewart's classic Sitting in the Park. And tracks like Behind Bars, A Love That's True, and Cause It's Wrong round this out to be one of the most underappreciated albums of the 90s. Rick was released from prison in 1997, and he returned with a bang when he released his fourth album, The Art of Storytelling, in 1999. This album was a true comeback, matching the artistic highs of his debut while bringing it to the new school. It even became his highest charting album to date at that point, and it featured Rick going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the illest MCs of the new era, like Cannabis, Snoop Dogg, Raekwon, and Outkast, proving that he was not a blast from the past, but instead a timeless artist who could rap with anyone. This album features a more focused Rick lyrically, and beat selection that grounds him in both the grittier and glossier sounds of the late 90s. This entire project is awesome, with the funked out joint with Snoop Dogg called Unify, the soulful throwback track Memories, and the outcast assisted Street Talking, which is one of the coolest songs ever made. The way he glides over the beats on here is the perfect evolution of his unique swagger that he's had since the 80s. Rick experienced more trouble with immigration services threatening to deport him throughout the 2000s, but his luck would turn around. In 2008, the governor of New York, David Patterson, granted him with a full and unconditional pardon on the attempted murder charges, and he was finally granted US citizenship in 2016. Unfortunately, Rick hasn't released an album since the turn of the millennium, but he's still touring the world, giving hundreds of countries a taste of his legendary catalog. He's released a handful of singles over the years, but it was his work on West Side Guns Who Made the Sunshine that reminded people that Slick Rick still means business. He appears on two of the 11 tracks on the album, and completely steals the show. 35 years after he originally showcased his talents with Dougie Fresh, and he proved that he was still able to be the most captivating MC around, even on a project with over a dozen modern MCs who are all in their prime. It's songs like these that make me really wish artists like Slick Rick, Rakim, and Big Daddy Kane would come out of retirement and give hip hop a new body of work. I feel like Rick's style would fit perfectly over the modern underground production, and these two songs are perfect evidence of that. And Rick is finally getting the recognition he deserves. Actually today, on January 5th, the day that I'm recording this, the Grammys announced that they will be honoring Slick Rick with a Lifetime Achievement Award this year. Hip hop usually has a very short shelf life for its artists. A rapper who is popping right now probably won't be revered in the same way just four or five years later. But some artists are timeless. Artists like Slick Rick make music that will be talked about forever, because Slick Rick the ruler is hip hop royalty. Thanks for watching everybody. Go ahead and drop your favorite Slick Rick song down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is greatly appreciated. I am also very proud to announce that I have recently launched a Patreon page, so if you want to support the channel over there, that is appreciated more than you know. 
listed on the screen here is the name of all my current patrons. So thank you so much to this group right here. The Patreon has exclusive playlists and album reviews. And the patrons are going to be able to vote on one of my video topics every month. So go check that out if you're interested. And of course right here on the channel I have a huge year planned out. The videos aren't going anywhere. I even have a couple that are literally years in the making. And those are coming at you guys later this year. So stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.